Welcome to the Prime Strength YouTube channel. As always, Brandon Teets, owner and head coach here at Prime Strength. And we got another training vlog for you guys. As always, I'm filming all my training workouts into my October 2nd meet. Today's my lower body hypertrophy day. And what I want to discuss in today's video is the purpose of every single exercise I'm doing, as well as uh, kind of the dichotomy of how I rate exercises and kind of view an exercise's effectiveness and purpose. So we got high bar squats to start for sets of nine, followed by some Romanian deadlifts, some leg extension, some leg curls, uh, some grip work later, a bunch of stuff. But I want to cover a few things here. Now, these high bar squats are not just to do a high bar squat. It's not just to move the position of the bar up my back. There's specific benefits a high bar squat's going to uh, impose on the body from an adaptation stimulus standpoint. So the first thing is going to be more thoracic extension and really lumbar extension as well as quad extension demand. Uh, of moment arm, which is just a fancy physics way of saying basically your upper back, low back, and quads have to work harder in a high bar squat than your uh, low bar squat. But along with this, what you're also training is an upright squatting pattern. So I'm literally training a movement pattern that is similar to my back squat, my competition style low bar squat, that is making me move in an upright fashion. However, when I perform this exercise, what you're gonna notice today is I'm really focused on forward knee travel. I was trying to move my knees as far forward as possible, more than usual, and I actually mobilized my ankles before performing this uh, for a really long time. I was spending a long time warming up. The reason being is the more I can get some quad recruitment and kind of an upright pattern going, which if I get my ankle dorsi flexors to move through more range of motion, meaning uh, my ankles can basically close their angle more and my knees can move forward more, I'm gonna have more quad recruitment and train a more upright pattern. And this has a ton of benefit to my squat because I'm so lanky, I'm six foot and I have really long limbs, this allows me uh, to stay more upright in my low bar squat. Along with that, what this is gonna do is kind of train a slightly different movement pattern than my low bar to ensure my joints stay fresh and healthy, especially this far out from the meat. I do not need to abuse comp squatting twice a week at this point or three times a week, really heavy and just push my joints over the edge. So there's a lot of purpose to an exercise and it really comes down to what you're trying to get out of it. And I think a lot of people don't think deep enough about this. There's kind of a dichotomy. Check out this 407 here, by the way, or 402 actually, this is 402 pounds. Fastest 402 anyone's ever done. I was just kind of in a mood to get these done, but I kept my form really clean. I just wasn't taking my time between reps. However, I think you could all admit the consistency is pretty good here for the speed. Um, but anyway, the point here is that exercises kind of have um, a certain checklist you need to check off as to what purpose you're getting out of this. I actually talked about this in our group coaching weekly Q&A this week. Uh, the various factors that go into an exercise's, um, you know, kind of determination of what this exercise is and if it's good. There's various factors like your tension profile of an exercise, for instance, how your muscle bellies or the movement pattern receive tension based on the resistance curves, the strength curves, etc. There's things like overloadability, how well an exercise can be overloaded. For instance, a squat has a high overloadability due to its small incremental fine-tuned loading ability compared to say like a bicep curl. If you try to increase even by five pounds, that's usually a huge like 10% increase in strength. So the overloadability is very low. Uh, there's things like fatigue ability. A squat has uh, very low localized fatigue ability. You kind of send fatigue everywhere in a squat as where a leg extension isolates that fatigue to the quads. So there's various factors. There's other ones like range of motion, coordination demand, etc. We talked about this in our weekly Q&A. Uh, I'm also talking about this in our free podcast that we'll be dropping on the channel here soon in a few days. So uh, there's going to be some information coming on it hitting up these RDLs guys with 345 for 10 beltless. So, so this exercise, for instance, huge range of motion, uh, really solid overload ability, and the tension profile is amazing there. Uh, shout out to Aaron, by the way, this is our gym owner. Some people noticed he's super cool in the last few videos, so I wanna give him a little cameo. But anyway, with those RDLs, high, high tension profile, high overload ability, great range of motion, um, but kind of poor fatigue ability. This leg extension, on the other hand, 
um, does not have as much of a um, overload ability, but it has a good localized fatigue ability. So you can actually really localize the fatigue to the quads while uh, minimizing tension in other areas. So I, a lot of people say, hey, what's the best exercise for quads? Is it squats or is it leg extensions? Is it leg press? Th that's really a stupid binary way of thinking about it. And you know, like A versus B. In reality, every exercise has its purpose. And what you have to understand is why you're implementing a specific exercise at a specific time. So you really wanna get out of binary thinking and add a little bit more nuance and complexity to it. Um, so yeah, doing these leg extensions, for instance, what else is this training besides localized fatigue to the quads? It's also training terminal knee extension. So the resistance curve here, I'm going to get a lot of good peak tension at the, the highest contraction point of the quads when my knees lock out. In a squat, there's almost no tension at the top of it. And so you're really never training what we call terminal knee extension. However, a leg extension will do that. Likewise, with a leg curl, you're training the knee flexion component as we're all deadlift variations only train the hip extension component of the hamstring muscles. So again, there's purpose to everything and you have to understand why. And I actually think when people start to understand these things, they try harder on their accessory work and they implement um, kind of more intensity, so to say, towards the things that maybe can go overlooked because they start to realize that, hey, these leg extensions matter, these leg curls matter. Uh, finishing up with some grip work here. Now, what I did on this day was actually a little different. I decided to go with actual working sets uh, where I'm pulling the, the axle bar off the, the floor. So in previous sessions, I was just holding the bar at lockout, which has worked in the past for me, but I wanted something a little bit more specific. So I just decided to basically build up to as heavy of a weight as I could for sets of five while keeping the grip clean. And then I did a long hold on the last set. So got up to 365 here, which is kind of pathetic. My grip is pretty weak. I would imagine most of you watching this you might have a hard time getting the 365 up, but I bet most of you could grip this. So really trying to train this grip as, as good as I can. Uh, and on this last one, I, I did a long hold at the end. I think I got about 20 or 25 seconds before I had to put it down. But that's our training for today, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it and took something away from it. If you're interested in group coaching, head over to prime-strength.com. We got some awesome programs there. But more importantly, we have awesome videos teaching you guys the why behind everything. All sorts of private videos on the website database. Uh, and if you can't afford that, we got some awesome free content coming in our podcast that we'll be dropping this week, uh, which you can leave some questions for the Q&A for that for. So I'll see you guys in the next video.